vitamin D, you talked about dementia, what's going to help prevent dementia. Vitamin D is, it's actually more than a vitamin. Vitamin D gets converted into a steroid hormone. So a steroid hormone, essentially, what it does is it goes into the nucleus of a cell where all your DNA is, and it, it's activating genes and deactivating them. It's affecting your genome. And it's actually over 5% of your, your, your genome is being affected by vitamin D. Why is that important? Because 70% of the U.S. population has insufficient levels of vitamin D. The reason for that is because vitamin D3 is actually made in the skin from UVB radiation from the sun. And so if you're not outside, then you're not really making a lot of vitamin D3 in your skin. And vitamin D3 then gets converted into this steroid hormone that regulates everything, right? And so, um, you know, in modern day society, you know, we're inside all the time. We're working, we're not outside. And even if you were outside, there's so many other factors that affect it. So anything that blocks out UVB radiation blocks out the availability of your body to make vitamin D3. So sunscreen, right? That's a big one. Melanin, the, the darker pigmentation that acts as a natural sunscreen. And then latitude, depending on where you live also. So, you know, a good number of months out of the year, if you're in a more northern latitude like England, like Wales, like Chicago or Sweden, you're not, UVB radiation is not even hitting the atmosphere, you know, for several months out of the year. Combine that with sunscreen or melanin, and you got like this disaster, right? In fact, there was a study out of the University of Chicago that looked at African Americans and Caucasians and their white ability. People and white people. Yeah, exactly. Their ability to make vitamin D3 from UVB radiation. From, from the, the sun. sun, yeah. And as I mentioned, you know, melanin is a natural sunscreen. And, you know, people that are you know, either, you know, from African origin or South American or Southeast Asian, right? People that are closer to the equator usually have more melanin. It's an, it's an adaptation to prevent you from burning from the UV rays of the sun. Well, um, this University of Chicago study found that, um, you know, people that are African American had to stay in the sun six to 10 times longer than people with fair skin, the Caucasians, to make the same amount of vitamin D3. And so as a consequence, if you take someone who, like yourself, well, you're, you're, you've got a little I'm, bit more me melanin. I'm like mixed. A little so. bit, yeah. You've got a little bit more melanin. But let's say you take someone who, you know, has a— Like my mom. She's like, Nigerian. Okay, your mom from, yeah, Nigerian. And let's say your mom moves to Chicago, yeah. right? Well, she's moved to bloody England. Or if she moved Southwest. to England, right, exactly. Then you're talking about a recipe for disaster in terms of vitamin D because you're not only not— making it several months out of the year. I forgot how many months out of the year, maybe four or five or something like that, where the UVB radiation is not even hitting the atmosphere, but you have this natural sunscreen. What's the consequences of that in terms of symptoms? Well, it's it's kind, it's kind not like an acute thing where you kind of just look in the mirror and you're like... But what is the causation then in terms of... Right, right, yeah. So the reason I say this is because people always think of like, well, I'm not getting enough vitamin C and I have scurvy and you can look in the mirror and your gums are falling apart, right? It's easy to identify this. Vitamin D deficiency or insufficiency is more insidious. It's kind of this damage that accumulates over time. It's something that isn't, you know, quite noticeable. Or maybe maybe you're feeling, you know, may, maybe you're feeling like lethargic or you don't have enough energy, things like that, but you don't really know quite why. So vitamin D insufficiency and deficiency, there are acute effects where like if it's severe, it can cause rickets and like bone malformations and stuff, especially if it's happening early in life. But um, what we now know is that being deficient or insufficient in vitamin D can increase dementia risk by 80%. And that's been shown in multiple studies. The converse is also true. So people that supplement with vitamin D3, and this is where a simple solution comes in, right? So you're not making it from your skin, but you can take a supplement. People that supplement with vitamin D3 have a 40% reduced risk of dementia. So in other words, they're avoiding deficiency which is very common, and avoiding that deficiency then is reducing their dementia risk. And there's actually even been studies in people with dementia, in people with Alzheimer's disease, that were giving a vitamin D supplement or a placebo control, and those individuals given the vitamin D supplement had improved cognition, 
They had um, lower markers of amyloid plaques, so those were this will those were also measured as well. So vitamin D is doing a lot of things. It's it's regulating five percent of your protein coding human genome. If I want to increase my probability of getting dementia, then I've got to stay out of the sun. I've got to avoid um, vitamin D. I've got to drink alcohol, smoke, be sedentary, and I've got to sleep really badly. Yes, and eat a lot of ref refined sugar. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now, you might go, well, how much vitamin D, right? <clears throat> I'm talking about deficiency and insufficiency, and you really want to get a blood test to know what your levels are. There have been, I don't know, 30-plus studies that have looked at vitamin D levels and all-cause mortality. So that would be, again, you know, how, you know, dying from a variety of different diseases, cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, cancer. And people that have blood levels of vitamin D between 40, 60, maybe 80 nanograms per milliliter have the lowest all-cause mortality. So these people are not deficient, not insufficient. Insufficiency happens at about 30 nanograms per milliliter below that. Deficiency is 20 nanograms per milliliter and below. And so um, there have been a variety of studies that have looked at, for example, the brain and the aging brain and vitamin D levels. And it's been shown that for every you know, 10 nanomole per liter decrease in vitamin D blood levels, there's an increase in brain damage. It's called white matter hyperintensities. It's basically damage to the white matter in your brain. And the white matter in your brain is myelin. That's how your brain's communicating and, and like how, you know, it's it, electrical impulses are being, you know, moved so that you can think and talk and all that. Exactly. Yeah, I hadn't had one today, so I feel like <laughs> you've, you've persuaded me. Most people that are deficient can increase their blood levels to a normal sufficient level by about 4,000 IUs of vitamin D per day. So not, and that's been done, that's been shown in multiple studies. Not, it's not, it's not that hard to take. In fact, vitamin D supplements are probably the cheapest supplement out there. It's like 10 cents per pill. 